Good morning, Bangalore. Good morning. I was told the easiest way to learn Kannada is to put Madi after every second so, word. And I apologize to language purists. Console team. Console team. Pitch black, Madi. No, I kid you not. We need complete darkness. Okay. How does everyone feel at the thought of darkness? Yeah, no reaction. Well, some of us can get along just fine. You know, I mean, you can walk around the stage without bumping into things. Lights back up and give your eyes time to adjust, right? So I'm Pranav. I'll be taking you through the first third of the day. Uh, thanks to Gadam Suresh for a rousing opening. And what we're going to be doing is I'll talk to you about seeing with sound. Different, well, a different use of sound as compared to what you just heard. And once that happens, we will move forward with our, well, first speaker, so to speak. All right. So what I'm wearing is an artificial eye. It has a pair of video glasses. That's what I have. I've got an awful lot of cable, which goes into a central processing unit. And I'm wearing headphones, which allow me to hear an image, which is conveyed through the camera. So it's a live view. Okay. Well, you know, noticing the sort of fear we had with the dark, why do I want to even bother with light? Slight change. Okay. So, you know, what's, you know, those of us who are in the software, what's the use case for light? What do you, what do, you do with it? You know, do you drive with it? Do you fly with it? Do you recognize faces? There's so many things you can do with light. And there are a whole range of other use cases. You can look at graphs and things. OK, next slide. Huh? Yeah. yeah. No, slide title. Slide? Title. OK. OK. Now, the trouble with light is, biologically, you need working eyes. It's kind of tricky. Now, there are two ways to do this. If you don't have working eyes, you either, one, send the light source directly into the brain, bypassing the eyes completely. Or two, you enter, uh, you use something called sensory substitution. Okay. How many of you have heard of something called synesthesia? Anybody? OK. What we are doing in sensory substitution, in a way, is stimulating synesthesia. OK? So you know, some people associate color with some kind of smell and so on. So here what we are doing is, in my case, we are using, we are converting light to sound. And you'll hear what that sounds like. Change slide. OK, we just spoke about sensory substitution. That's the visual lineup for those who need it. Next. OK, how does this all work? It's not black magic. It works because our brains are plastic. What that means is, you see, earlier, people used to believe that the brain had different areas for different things, and those areas would be used for those tasks, and that's it. Then when people started imaging the brain, they realized, oh, wait a minute, not the case. Our neurons are sufficiently flexible to readapt themselves to their original function given the right stimulus. In this case, the sound schema I'm going to play for you shortly will convert into electrical impulses in the brain, which are the same impulses that the brain gets when it experiences organic vision through your eyes. 
the faster the neurons return to their original function, that's called plus neuron plasticity. And it's an active area of research. Okay? The software I use is called The Voice. And that's V, capital O, I, C, and small E. And it does the conversion of light to sound. That's the simplest way to put it. Okay. I'm going to, sorry about the vibration. We are swapping cables in the middle of the presentation, which is so much fun. Next. All right. So how do you do this? Okay. Has anyone looked at the variety of shapes visible even in this room? You got people, you got profiles of people, you look at chairs, you got tables, you got microphones. You've got the floor, you've got the ceiling, you've got stages, you've got painting. How do you have a generic mapping for all of this so that you can say, okay, this is light, this is sound? So what the voice does, it pans the sound from left to right, and you're going to hear that shortly. The horizontal panning represents the placement of the object in the horizontal plane. The pitch represents height. So higher the pitch, the higher the object. And the volume of the sound, okay, represents brightness. So the louder the sound, the brighter the object. Okay. All of this is decoded in the brain to give you vision. Uh, anyone wants to try it, get into an fMRI machine and watch the display. Change. Okay. That, did anyone hear that sound? Yeah. That's a horizontal line. Pure tone, flat. Next. That's not, that's not road construction, but that's a very, very, very quick representation of a very short line, okay? Short vertical line, it's a, just a blast. Next image. That's not aliens from outer space, but what that is, is the first image I could recognize, which are curtains. Okay, next. Anyone know what that is? Yeah, play the sound again, if we can. So, you see the height changes, as well as the other uh, around the tower, it's not a plain vertical column, right? There are other things around the leaning tower of pizza. Oh, pizza, not pizza. Okay? So, how many of us have touched a rock from space? Anybody? No? Well, now you can do astronomy without eyes. You don't need telescopes. Next. Which one is this? Crocodile. I am fascinated. So I do wildlife, I do landscape photography primarily. And in case I did want to do animal photography, I could, you know, if you want to look at a crocodile, and if you don't have a model, this is how you do it. Okay. Next. I know, that sounds horrible. Reduce the volume. Okay, so how many of us here are accessibility professionals? Yeah. Accessibility, user interface design. Any of us design web pages? No one? Okay. If you are designing something, one of the challenges you have is Determining how well things flow together on a page. So that's the image of me trying to look at a web page and determining how closely space elements are so that everyone can see them. Okay. Another slide change? Yeah. Okay. So next. All right. That's just a very complex street scene. 
I know it sounds like a meaningless jumble of sounds, but it takes a little practice. So how it works is, now very quickly coming to photography, what I do is I use the eye, and let, let me show you what all of you sound like together. Okay? We change cables once again. All right. This is the sound of you. And the chairs and the tables and the rest of the scene. Okay. And what happens here is, if I had to take a picture of all of you, I would now step back to cover more area. You see how the sound is changing? And I move forward slowly to establish perspective. You see how the sound changes a little bit? I look up, I look, I look down actually to see how we are. I look up a little bit. No, I think I like the middle distance, I'm perfectly happy. And then I pick up a camera, which in my case is a phone, position it like, you know, in front of what I have seen, and I press the click control. And lo and behold, you have a picture. Okay. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I had for seeing with sound. <laughs>